Many people believe that victory in war is a matter of defeating the enemy, but it's not. That's victory in football or maybe chess. Victory in warfare is a matter of achieving the war aim. And as states change, their war aims change. The enemy army has surrendered. I've removed the enemy political leadership. I've invested the capital. It's over, right? That's what warfare is. Because that was what warfare was in the 20th century. Soon you will have much smaller groups, some armed by states clandestinely, some just operating on their own, non-state groups, who can deliver the kinds of attacks against states that hitherto only states could do in war. So as terrorism becomes more like war, war becomes more like terror. I think in the 21st century, the war aim will be the protection of civilians. And that's a very different war aim from the 20th century. Each generation has to ask itself what kind of terrorism it will suffer. Terrorism tracks the state. It follows the constitutional order of states, which means that it's the same for a century or so, and then it morphs into something radical and unprecedented. If I were asked to uh, counsel the incoming administration, whether Republican or Democratic, I would say the first step would be to restore the adherence to law, our faith in law, our reliance on law as part of our strategic campaign. It might be international law, which badly needs reform. It may be going to the Congress for statutory authority. We may need new laws. We may need a preventive detention statute. We may need a national ID card. We may need different rules to govern electronic interception. But we must do it openly, not clandestinely, and do it through law. You want to ask yourself in every circumstance, does the increase in power that we give the security services protect our rights? Or does it diminish them over what they would otherwise be if we didn't increase that power? And if the answer is it doesn't, then you should not have given that power to the state. The future will be one in which terrorism is not dominated by jihadists. Many people uh, are unhappy that I don't spend more time talking about Muslim fundamentalism, which is an important threat. But I tell my students that if every jihadist became a Presbyterian, the kind of things that we have to worry about in the 21st century, which are uniquely tied to our vulnerabilities, would still be things to worry about.